Hello and welcome to our celebration of Church at Home. Uh, this coming Sunday, we're celebrating the Feast of Corpus Christi. I'm Father Joshua. I'm Father Michael. And uh, we are celebrating this great, great feast, which is the um, kind of the conclusion of all of the feasts that follow Easter in the liturgical year. They kind of move along with uh, Easter um, developing into Pentecost and then uh, Blessed, Tr or Blessed Trinity and, um, and this Feast of Corpus Christi. So we are um, focusing this week on the Eucharist and really the ancient tradition of celebrating the Eucharist and uh, our focus on that, uh, th that really ancient and historical tradition is important. And so Father Joshua has used um, a word I, I really like, uh, historical aspect to this great tradition that we have in the Eucharist. And I really like in the selection of readings for this Sunday, the second reading coming from one of Paul's letter, letters to the Corinthians, which of course predates the writing of the Gospels and is really a historical marker of something that a certain person said very specifically to a given community, Paul to the Corinthians. And in there, he talks about the Eucharist. It is the earliest or the oldest testament in the church that we have of the presence of the Eucharist. And like I said, it even predates the gospel. So here's St. Paul testifies to how far back this goes, literally to, to the beginning of Christendom, and how central and important um, this is to, to our faith. Yeah, uh, and Paul, if you don't know, he lived in Corinth for a year and a half. We get that from the book of Acts. So we know that he spent a lot of time with them, and he would have been celebrating the Eucharist with them. And so what he is uh, telling them isn't something new. He is reminding them in his letter of the thing that they used to do together and how to do it. And so it's beautiful when we see that scripture, and then we... Uh, at every time that we celebrate Mass, do say literally the same words that Paul is saying. And we even use um, that uh, little part after it as the memorial acclamation, what we all say in the middle of the Eucharistic prayer. Um, so it's really an incredible thing that details um, exactly what we are still doing in the church today. And really, every day, um, not just on Sundays, you know, we have Mass every day. So uh, we've been doing every day for as long as the church has existed. So it's really a powerful thing for us. And uh, it makes, so we have in, in the Eucharist, in everything that we've just said about it, that being the source and the center and the summit of our Christian life, um, it shows us something very interesting about the way Jesus works, mm -hmm. with His grace, with His miracles, and what Jesus does with what we bring to him mm -hmm. in a very um, tangible, of course, and powerful way in the Eucharist, but it goes beyond that too into a, a really neat observation that um, Father Joshua brought up about the gospel. Yeah, so in the gospel today, we have the one miracle of Jesus that is recorded in all four of the gospels in almost the exact same way. Uh, this is the feeding of the 5,000. And in Luke's account, he, uh, the, or the disciples come to Jesus and they say, you know, uh, we, you should send them away so that we, they can go get food. And Jesus gives them a mission, he says to them. And it sounds a little snarky maybe, but I think he was doing it as a, uh, he was giving them an instruction, giving them a, a mission, really. He says, uh, give them some food yourselves. And then they... Uh, say this little bit of food is all we have and he, Jesus takes it he blesses it and then he beautifully gives it back to the disciples and then they're able to fulfill his original mission and they go out and give uh, give away this food and an overabundance of food is left over at the end so right this is exactly what happens in all of our lives and in all of our missions, if we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, we receive uh, back from the Lord, the, we, we, give a, we receive a mission from him, we offer him our lives, what little we have, and he gives us back more than we could possibly have. And it is in the giving away 
of our lives, the fulfilling of our mission, that we are able to actually experience the miracle of grace. It isn't until the distribution of the fishes and the loaves occurs that there's actually a multiplication. Jesus doesn't hand them back a whole ton of food. He just gives back what looks like the same food, but it's been blessed. And so when they give it away, it multiplies in their hands. And I think we can uh, do something similar in our lives if we allow the Lord to, uh, if we allow the Lord to bless us and we offer to him what little we have. Right, and in doing so, we're not relying on our own talents, our own skills, our own abilities. And of course, we're, we're using them, and those are God-given gifts, but we're not doing so um, agnostic of God or without Him, but we're cooperating with His plan to use our gifts, our talents, our treasure, whatever it might be. And in so, in, in so doing, in that cooperation, I think everything that you just said is that's fulfilled. We can give away more. We can do more than we actually began with. Yeah. Right? And that, that overabundance, that superabundance is God-given and um, done or achieved and realized in cooperation with His grace. Yeah. And we've seen this historically throughout the history of the church, right? We see it in so many of our saints, so many of our uh, people in the world who are living amazing Christian lives, right? They have very little often. Uh, they, you know, so many of the saints are people who have promised poverty. You know, they've promised not to own anything. They don't take any credit for the worldly things that they have or use and and uh, and still they produce or uh, you know in their hands the miracle that takes place of multiplying graces and upon graces through the power of Jesus in their lives uh, because they have given what little they do have to the Lord and the same even though it looks different in our lives as uh, as a community that's not in religious life, right, we, uh, we can do the same thing. And we do have a lot of saints, too, that are not uh, from religious communities, and they did the exact same thing. So um, this is uh, an opportunity for us to, um, to recognize in the Eucharist God uh, giving us back what we offer um, in the offering. Uh, so if we give our lives in the ba as we as the gifts are brought up, uh, we will receive back in the Eucharist more than we could ever have possibly done on our own. God bless you all. Have a great week.